Thank you for worshiping with us online at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Gretna, Nebraska. I am Pastor Sam Pitch, and today is Maundy Thursday. Uh, thank you for joining us this Holy Week as we reflect on the last few days of Jesus' earthly ministry. Maundy Thursday is an especially active day in the scriptures, a day where Jesus teaches his disciples, where he institutes the Lord's Supper, where he is betrayed and ultimately arrested. There are a lot of things for us to ponder on this Maundy Thursday, and we thank you for joining us. Join us tomorrow for our Good Friday service. It will be available at noon online. We sing our first song. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be Glory to the be Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb 
according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take it according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner part. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And all the gods of Egypt I will ex execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will you befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him, one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he had gave it to them, saying, Drink it of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to this sentence. Supposedly, the nuclear launch codes were especially mischievous. Now, that's a nonsense sentence. It doesn't mean anything at all. But what I really want you to notice is all the words that I mispronounced. Supposedly is not a word. It's supposedly. And even though we've had a number of presidents pronounce the word nuclear, it's really nuclear. Especially is especially, and mischievous isn't really a word, it's mischievous. You know, as a pastor, I have to talk a lot, and I mispronounce my fair share of words, you've probably noticed. But there's one word in my life that I mispronounced for a long time, an embarrassingly long time. And that word is Mondi. Today is Mondi Thursday, but... For the first 20 years of my life, I thought it was Monday, Thursday. I always heard it wrong. I always read it wrong. I'd go to church, and it would be Monday, Thursday. That's the Thursday before Good Friday and, and before Easter. And Monday, Thursday is the day where we talk about how Jesus got together with his disciples and instituted the Lord's Supper. You know, that word Monday, I never thought about what it might mean. I thought it had something to do with Holy Communion. But... One day in college, I was sitting there reading the bulletin for one of these services, and I noticed how Mondi was really spelled. It didn't have that A before the Y at the end. And I thought it was a typo. I was pretty confident it was Monday Thursday. But then I did my own investigation. I realized that I had been wrong for 20 years. It was Mondi Thursday. Then I got curious about what that word actually meant, Mondi. What did Mondi mean? I was assumed it had something to do with the Lord's Supper, but I really looked into it. It turns out it's from the Latin word for mandate. I said, that's kind of interesting. What mandate are we talking about on Maundy Thursday? You see, Matthew, Mark, and Luke's gospel, they all talk about the Lord's Supper. Jesus gathers together with his disciples to celebrate the Passover. And during that Passover meal, he takes this bread and he breaks it. He says, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Then he takes the, the cup after supper and he shares it with the disciples and says, this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And I just thought that's what Maundy Thursday was all about. But John's gospel actually doesn't include anything about the institution of the Lord's Supper. John's gospel focuses on something else that happens on that Thursday, where Jesus, along with his disciples, decides to wash their feet. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And there's this big discussion between Jesus and his disciples about whether that was appropriate or not. Surely Jesus shouldn't be washing their feet. They should be washing Jesus' feet. And Jesus makes this great point about what it means to be a Christian. He talks about what his mission is. He didn't come to this earth to be served, but he came rather to serve. And so he washes his disciples' feet as an example to them and an example to us about what it is to be a Christian and to follow Christ's commands and Christ's example. We are called to love one another and serve one another. And after Jesus washes his disciples' feet, that's where we get the mandate on this Maundy Thursday. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, Jesus says, you are to love one another. 
This is Jesus' mandate. This is Jesus' command, his order to his disciples and to us to love one another as Christ has loved us. And so that's what we'll focus on on this Maundy Thursday. And this is a unique Maundy Thursday, isn't it? Usually on this Thursday, we gather together in the church building and we partake in the Lord's Supper in holy communion together in community the way it's meant to be enjoyed. But as we all know, that's not possible this year. And so we'll focus on the other aspect of Maundy Thursday, this command that we love one another. Even though we can't gather for communion, we can certainly, especially love each other at this time. And so what we'll do is look at the example that Christ sets out for us about how we can love one another. First, we can look at just the example of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. If anyone who's ever walked this earth deserved to be served, it's Jesus. He was the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He was the King of kings. He's the one whose feet should have been washed, whose every need should have been attended to. But that's not what Jesus wanted. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And he calls us to walk in those steps as well. To not consider ourselves as better than others. To not make happiness all about our own fulfillment, but to use the gifts that God has given us to serve other people, to serve the creation. That is why we exist. That's why God made us, to be servants. And that's the best way that we can shape our minds and our attitudes towards loving others. Not to see other people as burdens, but to see them as the goal. Our service to them is truly walking in Christ's example. And secondly, we can look at Jesus' earthly ministry and see how he loved people with acts of mercy. With acts of mercy. Jesus did more than just saying that he loved other people. He responded to people's needs, whether they were physical or emotional or spiritual. If someone approached Jesus in need, he was quick to help. If someone was sick or injured or paralyzed or blind or deaf, he gave them healing. He attended to their physical needs. If someone was broken and outcast in this world, he would listen. He would embrace them. He would forgive them. Jesus attended to people's actual needs and calls us to do the same. Now, we, not, we may not be able to multiply loaves and fish in the miraculous way that Jesus did, and, and we probably can't heal people in the miraculous fashion that Jesus did, but we can all do something to help people in their needs, whether those needs are physical, emotional, or spiritual. God has given you so many gifts, whether those are financial gifts, whether those are talents, maybe it's knowledge, maybe it's just time you have to serve others, to volunteer, to lend a helping hand. We all have something that we can do to attend to the actual, real needs that people have. It's nice to tell people that we love them, but as Christians, we're called to show people that we love them. Christ certainly did. Another way that Christ exemplified love in his life was to fulfill his vocations faithfully. We all have vocations. We all have a calling that God has put in our lives. That calling oftentimes takes the the form of our family. You know, we are called to be husbands or wives, brothers or sisters, sons or or daughters, nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts, whatever it might be, we all have familial callings. And can we live out those callings in a God-pleasing way? It's a great way to show people that we love them. Jesus, even though he was the Son of God, even though he was fully divine, was still obedient to his parents as he grew up. And even as he hung on the cross, he was thinking about his mother, Mary. Remember, he wants to make sure that she's taken care of, and so she introduces, or he introduces her to John, and John to her, and he tells them to take care of one another. He wants to make sure that he's honoring his mother, even as he dies on the cross. Jesus had all these vocations that he took seriously. He was a good friend. He was a good teacher. And we all have vocations in our lives. Maybe it's our jobs. Can we do our jobs in a faithful and diligent manner. That's a great way to show people that we love them. 
It doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't always look that way. But that's what God calls us to. It is a gift to be able to work, to serve other people, and to fulfill that calling faithfully is a God-pleasing and wonderful thing. So think about the callings you have in your life, the people that God has put in your life, the job that he has given you to do, and, and do those things to the best of your ability. It's worth noting at this point what Jesus doesn't mean when he says love. See, Jesus' idea of love and, and the world's idea of love aren't always exactly the same thing. We live in a time where love is sort of defined as this blanket acceptance of all things, this tolerance of anything and everything. If you've read the Bible and you know Jesus a little bit, he's not particularly tolerant of all things. In fact, he has a pretty narrow view of the world. He says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. He talks about narrow paths and narrow doors, not blanket tolerance and acceptance of all things and all worldviews. To Jesus, that's not particularly loving. But what is loving to Jesus is telling the truth. Telling the truth to calling people to repentance, to correcting those who are on a bad path, to redirecting people and guiding people in the way of the Lord. That is truth for Jesus. Tomorrow is Good Friday. And there we see on the cross the ultimate example of Christ's love. That even though he was innocent, he loved us so much that he was willing to die in our place. That he was willing to become the atoning sacrifice for us. That while we were separated from God because of our sins, Jesus intervened and reconciled us to his Father. Jesus said no, there is no greater love than this, that, that a person lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus didn't just lay down his life for his friends, he laid down his life for everyone. Everyone who existed, everyone who would exist, men and women, Jew and Gentile, red, yellow, black, and white. When Jesus died on the cross, he did it because he loved the world. That is love for Jesus. It was sacrificial. While none of us can or is expected to die on the cross for the sins of the world, we can look at Christ's sacrificial love and think about the sacrifices that we can make for the benefit of others. It's not easy, but that's truly to walk in the example that Christ has set forth. Today is Maundy Thursday, and we have been given a mandate. We have been given a new command that we love one another, and we can do that. We can love one another by serving. We can love one another by fulfilling our vocations. We can love one another by, by caring about people's needs and intervening, whether those needs are physical, emotional, or spiritual. Because Jesus says that the world is watching and the world will know his goodness by our love. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the call of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those we name in our hearts at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us 
our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.